Hey everyone, I'm Nick and welcome to version 2 of CUDA Crash Course. So in version 2 of this series we're going to be fixing up some of the stuff from version 1 and introducing some new concepts, uh, some more modern C++ uh, style code, as well as switching over from stuff like Visual Studio 2017 to Visual Studio 2019. So specifically in this video we'll be showing the setup guide for Visual Studio 2019. So let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing we need of course is Visual Studio. So if you Google around for Visual Studio 2019, you should find this page. So I just found it at visualstudio.microsoft.com slash vs. And I'm going to be using uh, Visual Studio uh, Community 2019. So uh, this is a free version, so you should be able to just download this and use this to install Visual Studio. So I already have it downloaded. So if I go ahead and just look for uh, Visual Studio Installer, it should pop up or it should be maybe in your downloads folder or wherever you downloaded it to. So in this case, um, it looks like this for me, but that's because I've already installed it. Uh, if you're installing it for the first time, it will probably look something more like this, right? So uh, from here, right, it'll ask you all the things that you want to install along with Visual Studio 2019. So if you want stuff for data storage and processing, for Linux development with C++, uh, for Python development, you're free to download that. All I looked at though, or selected was desktop development with C++. And then at the bottom right, it says install while downloading. All right, so, um, so I just clicked on that, but since I already have it installed, we'll leave it there. So the next thing you'll want, of course, is the actual CUDA 10.1 toolkit. So let's go ahead and kind of reset this page here. So uh, for us, uh, so if you Google for that, it's also at developer.nvidia.com slash CUDA downloads. Since we're using Windows, we'll select Windows, x86-64, and I'm using version 10. Uh, I'm also using the local installer, so that'll be the one that you'll want to select uh, most likely. And then all you have to do is these very simple instructions, double click the executable, and then follow the on-screen prompts. So there'll be some uh, restarts that you'll have to do between the Visual Studio installation and the uh, CUDA Toolkit installation. But after you've installed Visual Studio, just install the CUDA Toolkit. Uh, the CUDA Toolkit doesn't just install the CUDA Toolkit, but it'll also install everything you need inside of Visual Studio uh, for CUDA development. So there isn't uh, one of those nice uh, you know, buttons to click as far as CUDA development goes uh, on that on the Visual Studio installer. That happens through the uh, installation of the CUDA Toolkit here. All right, so from there, let's go ahead and open up Visual Studio. So I'll open up Visual Studio 2019. And the first thing we'll do is we'll go to create a new project and then at the very bottom or somewhere in here, you'll find CUDA 10.1 runtime. So let's just click next. We'll give it a name and we'll just call this uh, sample and then project. All right. So you can place a solution and the project in the same directory, or you can give it the solution a different name. Uh, you can also select exactly where you want this product to be stored. All right. Then we uh, select create, and this will actually give you a sample project to work with. So it does a very simple thing. It just adds uh, two arrays together. So an array with um, one, two, three, four, five, and an, and an array with uh, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, right? And then it will accumulate the results in another array called C. All right, so, um, so if we, we can go ahead and build this project. So if I right click sample project and then I click build, it will build the project. So this building uh, compiles a project uh, for us and then we can go ahead and either click uh, run right here and you'll see it'll prop, uh, pull up something that shows, hey, if you add 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 with 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, you get the expected 11, 22, 33, 44, 55. Okay, so that's not terribly interesting. Um, and also we don't usually want all this code. Uh, we don't want to have to go through and you know, go in here and delete everything and start from scratch every single time. Um, and have to do that to start from scratch. Usually we don't want this uh, this extra code in here. It's just kind of a distraction. So what we'll go ahead and do is we'll close this out. So we'll close the solution and then we'll uh, create a new project or you could clone or check out the code from someplace else. Uh, in this case, we'll just look at uh, creating a new project. It will be an empty project. We'll click next and we'll just call it empty project. Right? And then I'll press create. So now we have a blank project, nothing in it, and there's nothing that nothing's been specified yet. So uh, the first thing we'll want to do is we'll go ahead and do uh, build dependencies. So I'll right click on the project. I'll go to build dependencies, build customizations, and then you should have something like CUDA 10.1 uh, 
uh, up here. So we're doing a CUDA project, so we want uh, CUDA 10.1 to be a build dependency. And there's a whole bunch of, uh, and there's a bunch of other stuff in here. We don't need to worry about that. Just make sure you select the CUDA version. Uh, and we'll click OK. And then the next thing we'll want to do is edit the properties in here. So uh, important thing to keep in mind is that uh, you can change the properties for different uh, ways that you're going to be building your program. So there's say release and debug or all configurations. Uh, and that corresponds with up here, you see you've got you know debug and then you've got you know x86 uh, or x64. Uh, so for the platform. So you need to make sure that if you're changing your configurations for debug, right, and say x64, but uh, over here you have it set to say maybe release an x86, right? You might have a mismatch there. So just make sure that if you're meaning to change some uh, properties in here, you're matching it up with what you're actually compiling with or what you have set uh, in your editor. So um, in this case, we'll just do uh, release an x64, and then I'll go to uh, CUDA C++. So the first thing I want to do is target machine platform. It's not a 32-bit machine, it's a 64-bit one. So I'll want to change that and I'll click apply. Um, then the next thing that I'll want to do is I'll go in here uh, to the linker and then uh, I'll go to uh, general, I'll look at input rather, uh, and then input it says additional dependencies. Uh, and so we'll go into that a little bit later of what we need to change there. Uh, but first let's go ahead and just make a source file. So we'll go ahead and add new item and in this case, we can go down to NVIDIA CUDA 10.1, whatever your CUDA version is, and we can select code in either a file or a header. Let's do a, a file. So we'll just call this test. So we'll add it, and then let's make a main function. So int main, and we'll have a very simple CUDA program here. I'll create an integer pointer A, and then I will call CUDA malloc, pass in the address of A, and I'll say I want 100 bytes on the GPU. And then I'll just free that memory right after I allocate it. So I'll free A as well and return zero. We'll go more in depth into you know, the basics of CUDA programs in later episodes. We'll just show some of the common build problems that people run into. So you may run into something like this where you know, you'll know you get this red underline saying identifier CUDA malloc is undefined. But this kind of makes sense because we haven't defined a function called CUDA malloc and we haven't included any uh, headers yet. So it just can't figure out you know what is the interface for CUDA malloc. So in order to get rid of these, uh, uh, this squiggly red line, we'll need to include a header. And this header is going to be CUDA runtime.h. Now CUDA runtime.h has, has all of our runtime API calls that we'll you know, be using. So CUDA malloc, CUDA malloc manage, CUDA free, uh, the, the prefetching API calls, etc. So in this case, it gets rid of the uh, red highlighting. And so we'll save it there. Okay, so that's the basics of you know, getting rid of the um, IntelliSense warnings. Uh, so the next thing that we'll want to do is, you know, what happens if we build this? So let's go ahead and build the project. Uh, notice the first thing we didn't change. We have to make sure that we are, uh, uh, we make sure we match whatever our device properties were. So, or our properties, right, that we set. So we set this for release in X64. So if we look down here, you know, you see we have some problems, right? So let's go ahead and just change this to uh, release and then x64 because that's where we changed it to be for a 64-bit machine. And let's go ahead and rebuild this. So if we rebuild it, we see that we got rid of that one error, but now we have a whole bunch of different errors, right? But we've made progress. We've got past at least one error. So here it says uh, a bunch of these uh, link uh, 2001 errors and then a link 1120 error. The link 1120 error just says, how many linker problems did you have? So it said five unresolved externals, and then these individual ones are our unresolved external symbols. So when you're compiling some code, uh, there's actually a number of steps that goes on. There's pre-processing, which is where we find, say, this file that we're including, and we paste it right there, uh, right wherever the include statement is. Then after that, there's compilation. So we have a problem here. Uh, that occurs later on, which is during the linking step. So we, we're using something called CUDA malloc, but the actual implementation of CUDA malloc doesn't exist inside of CUDA runtime.h. Uh, it actually occurs inside of the uh, CUDA runtime library. Uh, and so that's what these unresolved external symbols are. So it's basically saying, okay, I know what a function looks like as far as its interface, but I don't actually have the implementation. The implementation is actually in a library. So all these uh, external symbol errors 
can be fixed if we go into uh, properties, which I kind of hinted at earlier. So if under properties, so let's go ahead and just kind of go. So under configuration, and then under linker over here, and then under input, we'll need an additional dependency here. So I'll need to add the library where uh, CUDA malloc is actually implemented and CUDA free is actually implemented. So we'll go ahead and click there. I'll click edit and I'll add one thing, which is CUDART.lib. So the CUDART just stands for CUDA RT, so CUDA runtime. Uh, dot lib so that's the library where the CUDA runtime is actually uh, implemented and I'll click OK I'll click apply and then I'll do OK again and now if I rebuild the project you see there's not going to be any errors so I just need to make sure that I'm linking against the CUDA runtime uh, library uh, this this also goes if we're using any of the other libraries for CUDA, uh, with along with CUDA so if we want to use something like CURAND or CUDNN so or CUBLOSS uh, if you want those highly optimized libraries, we'll need to also change uh, right click properties. Uh, and under this additional dependencies inside of our linker options, we would put something like CURAND or CUDNN or CUSPARSE in there if we're using those libraries. And then if we run this, it doesn't do anything exciting. It just goes ahead and exits because it just allocates memory and then immediately frees it. All right. So that's the basics of getting started with Visual Studio 2019. Uh, if you're interested in any of the code for this series, it'll be located at github.com slash coffee before arch. So that's this page right here. And then we've got CUDA programming. So um, we'll, we'll have two branches here. So all the original code from version one of the series is located on the version one branch. All the new code will be located on the master branch. So if you just go to the site, that will be the code for version two of the series. All right, so that's going to go ahead and do it for today. As always, I'm Nick, and I hope you have a nice day.